Viewer, nine days after the Canadian Prime Minister stood up in the country's parliament to allege an Indian link to the killing of his father, Hardeep Nijjar's 21-year-old son Balraj Nijjar has now dropped a big fat bomb that has the Canadian system in total panic mode. In such high panic mode that it is completely silent. In interviews to Canadian newspapers, Balraj Nijjar has stated that Canadian intelligence held weekly briefings with his father Nijjar before his death three months ago. As you can imagine, this has put the Canadian government in an extremely embarrassing and awkward position in front of the world. On the surface, most people are wondering what makes Nijjar so special that he gets a weekly briefing at the expense of Canadian taxpayers. It is Canadian taxpayers, after all, who pay for Canadian intelligence. While Hardeep Nijjar is seen as a terrorist by India, he is clearly not seen as one by Canada, which is why the Western media has been describing Nijjar as an activist, a Sikh leader, a community Samaritan. One paper even described him as a plumber, which then begs the question, what was special about Nijjar that Canadian public taxpayer money was being spent to brief him every single week, according to his son. Now remember, these alleged briefings were taking place at a time when Nijjar had an Interpol red corner notice out against him with India actively seeking his extradition, India, which is Canada's diplomatic partner. So the Canadian taxpayer, in effect, is now faced with the possibility that Canadian intelligence was seeking out fugitives in order to keep them updated regarding their wanted status in other countries. Why should Canadian taxpayers be paying for such a thing, you might wonder? Let us, for the sake of argument, assume that Canadian intelligence was in some vague way trying to protect one of its citizens, in this case, Nijjar, having assessed that there was a threat to his life from unknown quarters. This then begs the question, viewer, did Canadian intelligence basically fail then in their primary objective to protect Nijjar and save his life? You're also probably wondering, why so many meetings? Why a weekly meeting? Why a meeting every single week? What was so important about Hardeep Singh Nijjar? Could it be that Nijjar was an informant for Canadian intelligence? Is it possible that he was so deep in with infamous Khalistani terrorist gangsters that he had begun to be a liability for handlers, perhaps sitting in Pakistan? Is it possible that he was bumped off either by gangsters because he was getting too big for his boots, or maybe he was bumped off by the ISI through their Canadian proxies? As Canada's attempt to blame India for the killing of Hardeep Nijjar backfires spectacularly across the diplomatic spectrum for the last nine days, with no evidence presenting itself for ten whole days, after Trudeau made that startling allegation, these scenarios I've just described have rapidly gained credibility and credence. And remember, these are not things that we are saying. It's the Canadian media that's asking these questions. The Indian government has said repeatedly that they've received nothing by way of specific evidence or information to support Trudeau's dramatic claim. Dr. Jay Shankar said it just a few days ago. The Indian government has additionally said it is willing to look at any specific information that Canada may provide, but it simply hasn't provided it. But what is India to do if such evidence is not supplied even 10 days after such an allegation is made publicly in front of the world? Could it be that raising the heat and continuing with this line that India is involved could backfire even more badly than it has for Canada? As the layers get peeled off day by day, has Canadian intelligence realized that any further traction on this story could blow the lid off their links with the Khalistani gangster nexus, its own links with drug cartels and the organized criminal supply chains that the Canadian government has protected ostensibly under the veil of civil liberties? Has Prime Minister Trudeau thus far kept in, has been kept in the dark, perhaps by his own intelligence agencies, Realize now that he has released the dogs of war that have done nothing but come back to bite him for the last 10 days? Is this a historic moment where a country known best for being America's northern neighbor has its hands dirty at the cost of other sovereign countries it has partnerships with? What Hardeep Singh Nijjar's son has done is shine a light at an aspect of this story that most were only speculating about that there is collusion and involvement of the Canadian government with this terrorist gangster nexus, and it has caught Canada completely off guard as a result. The country has now gone from being the 
one pointing fingers to the one who has to explain itself not just to India but to the world as well. The revelations that have come out courtesy Hardeep Singh Nijjar's son are no small thing. They basically suggest, like I just told you, that the Canadian taxpayer has been paying for weekly briefings for a man proscribed by India as a terrorist. 21-year-old Balraj Nijjar is the successor and son of terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. His claims have lit a fire that Canada isn't going to be able to put out in a hurry. Take a look. A new twist to the diplomatic war between India and Canada over the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Hardeep Nijjar's son, Balraj, has made a sensational claim. Balraj Nijjar has said his father was regularly in contact with the Canadian intelligence agencies. Balraj, in an interview given to the Canadian media, revealed that Hardeep Singh Nijjar met senior officials of the Canadian intelligence establishment two, three days before he was killed on the 18th of June outside the Gurdwara in Saray. Balraj also said that intelligence authorities had advised Nijjar to stay home. Balraj says he accompanied his father to these meetings. The new revelations come days after Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in a statement in Parliament pointed fingers at India over the murder. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijjar. India has categorically rejected the Canadian allegation of involvement in Nijjar's murder as absurd and politically motivated, saying Canada had long provided shelter to Khalistani terrorists and extremists. Kuch desh hamari di gayi information par bahut tejji se react karte rahe hain, jabki Canada ke baare mein main afsos se kehta hu ki ham logon ne bahut information unke saath regularly share ki hai, hamare level par bhi aur Bharat Sarkar ke level par bhi. Jahan tak pannu ka sawal hai ya nijjar ka sawal hai. इसके बारे में हम लोगों ने उनको कंक्रीट एविडेंस दिया है और वो स्वयं भी जानते हैं कि इन लोगों की किस तरह की गतिविधियां हैं लेकिन अफसोस यही है कि वहां से जिस तरह की रिस्पांस मिलनी चाहिए कनाडा से वो रिस्पांस नहीं मिली है हरदीप सिंह निज्जर वाज ओरिजिनली फ्रॉम अ विलेज इन पंजाब्स जालंधर डिस्ट्रिक्ट द 45 ईयर ओल्ड वेंट टू कनाडा अलेजेडली ऑन फोर्ज डॉक्यूमेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू इन्वेस्टिगेटर्स India has been demanding action against Khalistani terrorists, including Nijjar, who are operating from Canadian soil for several years now. It's extremely curious why Canada's intelligence agencies would meet a plumber so frequently unless there is more to it than meets the eye. Because do keep in mind, Indian intelligence agencies and the Ministry of External Affairs had regularly, not just once, but more than once, shared a dossier on Hardeep Singh Nijjar, who was a designated Khalistani terrorist in India. Khalistani terror, open threats to Canadian Hindus, targeted killings, gang wars, and now a diplomatic war with a friendly nation have put the Canadian government in a tough spot. Bureau Report, India Today. So let me just summarize the questions that I have in my mind, viewer, and I'm sure if you've been watching my show so far, these are questions in your mind as well, because we are completely aligned in the questions we ask on this show. Number one, why does an activist or a person being described by Canada as an activist need weekly intelligence briefings? Can someone please tell me? Question number two, what were Canadian agents briefing activist Nijjar about? Can someone please tell us that? Number three, was Canadian intelligence trying to hide a possible nexus with the Khalistan terror gangs? There's a big nexus over there, which is clear for everyone to see by now. Number four, was Hardeep Nijjar an informer or an informant 
to the Canadian intelligence? And could he possibly have been, you know, done away with or bumped off by these Khalistani gangs or these uh, organized crime gangs that operate in Canada freely? Number five, was Nidjar in some way disobeying orders? Could he have been bumped off by Pakistani proxies operating in Canada? Did he get in too deep? Was there a drug cartel angle in this? And did Pakistan not like what he was doing? And did they get him bumped off? There are so many tantalizing questions to be asked, which is the reason why Justin Trudeau's attempt to link all of this with India is being seen with a great deal of incredulity and also with increasing disdain because it's been nine days since the allegation and no credible, incredible, non-credible evidence has been presented in any which way. Joining me live to try and make some sense of this very, very, uh, uh, you know, mysterious, tantalizing new angle to the story, Gaurav Savant, our managing editor, who's been looking at everything very closely. But I'd like to start first by asking Yashovardhan Azad, one of uh, India's most well-known and well-regarded commentators on matters intelligence. He's a former IPS and former special director with the Intelligence Bureau. Mr. Azad, welcome. Gaurav, thanks for being with us. Uh, Mr. Azad, what do you make of this, sir? You know, for the lay person, that Canadian intelligence, and this is not something we are saying, the son of Hardeep Nijjar says that Canadian intelligence was meeting his father every week to brief him and to hold meetings. What do you think that was about, sir? You know, uh, Shiv, you have raised a, a lot of pertinent questions also before. Let me add a few because if you have any formal, uh, you know, uh, murder yeah. investigation, there are so many trails you like to pick up and then you thread uh, in between. In this particular case, what is really intriguing is that after even three and a half months, there have been no suspects, there have been no statements, there have been... And, and by the way, if you, if you look at the uh, a very deep study by Washington Post, even the people uh, in, who are living nearby have not been questioned. So uh, apparently, how is this investigation being done? What does not do? The second part is that this is absolutely mind-boggling when the son says that he was having a regular meeting with the CSIS. Mm. Now, obviously, as, as an intelligence man, as a cop, I would say he, he could have been one of the assets. Because, mind you, Shiv, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Nijjar, had gone over to Pakistan to meet the KTF chief. And it, it, on your platforms, you said it so many times yes. that he went to Tara. This was an information. We also gave this information to the, to the Canadians. That the Canadians were already aware of this information because this travel was facilitated, obviously, by, by the ISI. The other thing which is very, very... Uh, you know, visible and known to everyone is the is the collaboration between the uh, ISI offices in Canada and the various Khalistani groups. These Khalistani groups who are running, uh, you know, extortion rackets, as you've already pointed yeah. out, also being funded in, in some of these gurdwaras. So a lot of these actions are resulting in inter-gang rivalry. And mind you, there was a murder before Ribu Daman Malik's. And then uh, even later, there is, there is another murder. But these two murders have not raised any hackles. Uh, mm. in Canada. Only the Niger murder has, has raised. So obviously, he was somebody important. Either an ISI mole, he was certainly an asset for the uh, Canadian intelligence services because he was giving the information. And that's usual. I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's, something is even wrong with that because they would like to get information about the Khalistani activities. Correct. But the point after getting so much of information about Khalistani, nothing was done. And lastly, the most important point, if it was conveyed to Niger that there is a serious threat on you, then why wasn't he given security? Hmm. This is very, very mind-boggling. And, you know, the, the, uh, uh, hearing an assessment like that, Gaurav, from a former special director of Intelligence Bureau, uh, you know, makes this very plain, makes this very black and white to us, uh, you know, in an area that is otherwise grey. Amazing questions being asked by uh, Mr. Azad Gaurav. Uh, was he an ISI mole? Very likely that he was some kind of an informant, which is not on the face of it surprising. It's very possible that he was, which leads to the question, who bumped him off? And if there was a threat to his life, why wasn't he protected by the Canadian intelligence? Whatever be the case, Gaurav, it looks like there is a big cover-up at play. 
there is a big cover up perhaps and uh, you know an attempt to blame india yeah. for a crime where india is very categorically saying we've had absolutely no role to play you heard the external affairs minister dr s jayashankar say that's not india's policy and india wanted this man arrested had canada actually taken action on all the dossiers that india had sent after designating Hardeep Singh Nijjar as a terrorist under UAPA, uh, you know, Prevention of Unlawful Activities Act. The Canadian agencies could have arrested him and put him in jail. Perhaps he would have been alive. They could have extradited him into India. Perhaps he would have been alive. But they did nothing. They get meeting according to the Sun every week. Every week there was a meeting, which hmm. means he must have been someone really important as far as the Canadian intelligence agencies were there were concerned that they'd met him. On the 17th, that's one day before the murder, he was murdered on the 18th. There was another meeting, according to the Sun, scheduled for the 20th. So if they were meeting him so frequently on the 17th and then again on the 20th, which means he had some kind of information that the intelligence agencies really wanted. And was that the reason he was bumped off, that someone didn't want that intelligence to reach the Canadian intelligence agencies? Uh, and was he actually playing a double game, working with the ISI, as uh, Mr. Yashovardhan Azad very rightly pointed out, and as you've reported, Shiv, he travelled to Pakistan, he'd gone to Nankana Sahib, he'd yeah. met other terrorists there, including Tara, and those pictures are out in public domain. All of that seemed to indicate that there was a much bigger racket. Now, was this racket just about human trafficking? Was this racket just about drugs? Or was this terror, extortion and drugs rolled in together? Which incidentally, after the killing of Ripu Daman, uh, and also about uh, that Sukhdul Singh, that yes. other two killings, which uh, as Mr. Azad very rightly pointed out, that Sukhdul Singh, Sukha's killing hasn't raised anybody's hackles. But is that the gang war that is happening to perhaps silence those who may have been paying off people to continue that uh, gang operation? and extortion operations in Canada. So there are many layers and unfortunately very shoddy investigations in the past three months by the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Absolutely. What we know about the investigation so far uh, is the very opposite of inspiring confidence. Uh, and uh, Mr. Azad, uh, this is a complicated issue, a grey issue, many different scenarios and layers like Gaurav put it. But would you say that on the one hand you've got this, uh, you know, a fairly obvious presence of a gangster terrorist nexus? Uh, you know that is the, you know that has collusions and linkages with the Canadian establishment and intelligence agencies. And on the other hand, on the back of what Nijjar's son says, there is very, very evidently some kind of cover-up going on, sir. You know, apart from the cover-up, there are two things which are worrying me as an, yes. as an intelligence officer and also as as a countryman. You know, one is that uh, there is a huge kind of a build-up being being given and a hype being created hmm. that you. Know, are happening in Punjab and that is why these these fellows are going on forged passports and trying to seek amnesty and and you know going as a refugee which is which is telling the world you know in perhaps the in, in Punjab six are being persecuted and all whereas in actual practice what is happening is Punjab is least affected by the impact of Khalistani activities. It is impacted in criminal terms by the kind of the gang wars and the extortions which we are doing, like the killing of Sidhu uh, uh, Musewala. Yeah. And, and, and the second thing is that this racket is, is, is really creating a danger to the democratic world because this kind of secessionism in the name of freedom, if it is, if it is allowed in other countries, then it's going to be a serious matter. And the world has to look into it because it is in complete violation of international norms and laws. They, you know, in Canada, Shiv, when there was a trucker strike, there, yes. was a, there was a very strict action taken by Trudeau. They were all put behind bars. But where, when the threat is coming to the, to the diplomats, when, when, the, when the consulate is being hair out, when posters are being replaced, and the worst thing, the Indian flag is being stomped on the streets, yeah. if you do not then this is, this is an actual danger to a free world. And this, these two things must be looked into. So I think it is some kind of a cover-up because as I've already said, this, these are my uh, questions, whether it's an asset, whether it's an ISA guy. In fact, there were two ISI guys who were also uh, held for questioning. I don't mm. know what happened. But there is no news about this investigation except those in apostrophe, so-called credible uh, allegations and the indicators. So we are still aware as to what exactly they have 
by way of credible evidence. And, the, and those credible allegations or evidence or what have you, uh, uh, you know, has gone completely silent for the last six days. Trudeau hasn't said a word about all of this for the last six days. So it's leading a lot of people to wonder whether there is a rethink, whether the Canadian establishment has sensed that this entire... Uh, you know, campaign against India has backfired diplomatically and they're trying to cut their losses and cover their tracks. Who knows how it's going to unfold at this point of time. Canada most certainly looking extremely suspicious in the wake of what the terrorist son, the dead terrorist son himself is saying. Yashu Vardhan Azad, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much for giving us your wisdom. Helps us understand the story a whole lot better. Gaurav, also thanks for those inputs on that. Now remember, Gaurav was talking about Hardeep Singh Nijjar's visit to Pakistan in 2013-2014, where the most famous picture of Hardeep Singh Nijjar has emerged, and it's gone viral everywhere. I want to show you that picture, viewer, because this is a series of pictures that are some of the few of Hardeep Singh Nijjar. These are pictures of Hardeep Singh Nijjar. That's him in that orange T-shirt there in Nankana Sahib, one of the holiest sites of the Sikh religion. It's the city where Guru Nanak Ji was uh, born. Now, we've done an open source intelligent, uh, intelligence investigation into some of these pictures just to analyze whether indeed Hardeep Singh Nijjar visited Pakistan in 2013 as claimed or are certain vested interests trying to divert and say there is no Pakistan angle whatsoever and these pictures are actually doctored. Now, using internet tools and myth-busting tools, including satellite photography. My colleague Ankit Kumar puts up and puts together this very, very compelling report that you're going to watch that tells you exactly where Hardeep Singh Nijjar was standing when this picture was taken, and you've guessed it, it is indeed... All posing on a rooftop. Trees, an open area, a gate and dome-shaped structures in the backdrop. When referred to Google Earth imagery from 2013 with specific coordinates, exact features show up. Imagery of the same location three years later show no trees. That establishes that Nijjar visited this location in Pakistan almost 10 years ago. Barely a four-hour drive from where Osama bin Laden was eliminated by US Navy SEALs a few years prior. By comparing the first geolocated picture with the second image featuring Hardeep Nijjar holding the assault rifle, it now becomes evident that he's wearing the same t-shirt and turban in both photographs. And that lends a high degree of credibility to assertions that Nijjar's AK-47 picture was taken during this same visit to Pakistan. This, in turn, punctures theories spun by Nijjar supporters of his being a selfless volunteer and a devotee going on a pilgrimage. His visit to Pakistan, more than just a religious tour, when he pictures himself brandishing an assault rifle. With Ankit Kumar, Bureau Report, India Today. So these have become the most shared pictures of terrorist Hardeep Nijjar during 
a visit to Pakistan in 2013, 2014. Like I said, there have been vested interests who have tried to say that these are manufactured, but this orange T-shirt that we've analyzed with that other most viral image of Hardeep Nijjar is the very same T-shirt taken during the very same trip, perhaps on the same day as well. The weapon that Hardeep Nijjar is carrying is an authentic Kalashnikov rifle. We've looked at all these images very closely. We've also geotagged the location. What India Today's Ankit Kumar has done is not only analyze all these pictures, but we'll show you where this picture was actually taken. This is the marvelous aspect of open source intelligence. That's where it is. Now, we've got three features, trees and buildings behind Nijjar in this picture that we've geotagged and analyzed using satellite pictures. And that is the location where Nijjar is standing in Nankana Sahib. That is the dwar behind him that you can see in those pictures. Some of those trees have disappeared, but the satellite imagery does not lie. This is precisely in one of the Sikh religion's most holy places, Tankana Sahib, the birthplace of Guru Nanak, that this terrorist visited in 2013 to possibly and ostensibly meet with ISI agents. While on the topic of the ISI, and that the fact that we've busted these pictures and made it absolutely clear that this was in Pakistan around the same time and those pictures are interconnected. The Pakistan link is completely settled then. There's no argument, there's no debate. But the Pakistan angle doesn't end there because even now with what's happening in Canada, with the Khalistanis being protected there, there is an ISI toolkit that appears to be doing the rounds. Watch this report. Amidst the big Khalistani terror surge in Canada comes a massive revelation. Pakistan's spy agency, ISI, is providing all possible help to Khalistanis running rogue in Canada. Reading toolkit to help the Khalistani extremist running an anti-India campaign. Sources say the Park spy agency has roped in retired Park Army officials journalists and influencers to push anti-India hashtags on social media. Hundreds of such handles are under scanner for inflammatory and provocative content. Former NIA DG YC Modi has made a similar claim, saying that Pakistan's ISI is engaged in terror funding. Pakistan has Kashmir a problem क्रिएट किए हैं करते रहे हैं अभी भी करते हैं पहले पंजाब में भी प्रॉब्लम उन्होंने क्रिएट करने की कोशिश की थी और अब भी वो एक उनका उनकी तरफ से एक लगातार ये प्रयास रहता है तो जिसके लिए वो विदेशों में जहां-जहां भी उनके एंबेसीज हैं जहां-जहां भी उनको इस काम के लिए लोग मिल सकते हैं उस पर वो लगे रहते हैं former NIA head also pointed to Canada's kit gloves for Khalistanis, pointing out its stonewalling of India's extradition bids. कुछ देश हमारी दी गई इनफॉरमेशन पर बहुत तेजी से रिएक्ट करते रहे हैं, जबकि कनाडा के बारे में मैं अफसोस से कहता हूं कि हम लोगों ने बहुत इनफॉरमेशन उनके साथ रेगुलरली शेयर की है हमारे लेवल पर भी और भारत सरकार के लेवल पर भी पर अफसोस की बात यह है कि वहां से जो रिस्पांस मिलना चाहिए वो रिस्पांस नहीं मिला है एमिनेंट यूएस बिजनेसमैन ऑफ इंडिया ओरिजिन संत चटवाल पॉइंटेड टू एब्सेंस ऑफ सपोर्ट फॉर खालिस्तानीज अमंग ओवरसीज सिक्स देयर इज हार्डली एनीबॉडी हु सपोर्टिंग खालिस्तान दिस हैज बिकम अ पॉलिटिकल टेंशन बिटवीन बोथ द कंट्रीज एंड देयर इज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ बिग मिसकम्युनिकेशन गोइंग ऑन and which we all six, everybody, I'll say 99, more than 99%, we love India, India is our country, not the Khalistan. Nobody is interested in Khalistan. India, meanwhile, is piling on the heat on Khalistani elements with a series of multi-state raids, detaining dozens of suspects with Khalistani links. The raids are aimed at dismantling the terror gangster drug smuggler Nexus, the weapon suppliers and financers. Bureau Report, India Today.
Gaurav, uh, getting a word in from you on this, on the Pakistan angle, the ISI toolkit that could be at play. You know, looking at all those scenarios we discussed, Gaurav, if it was indeed the gangster nexus that bumped off, uh, uh, if it was the Pakistan ISI that had him bumped off, that's one thing. If the gangster nexus had bumped off, then it's not surprising to see how Pakistan wants to get involved to try and manage the perceptions. And they may have had a hand in trying to get India blamed for it. That would be a very desperate attempt. But Shiv, these are, you know, what happened before, what happened after in the form of killing of Sukhdul Singh and the fact that there is an apprehension not just in Canada but also in the United States of America because a lot of these gangsters, they, you know, Khalistan is just the brand. Khalistan is just the name. The industry that they run is extortion. The industry that they run is human trafficking. The yeah. industry that they run is actually drugs. Khalistan is just the cover so that nobody touches them. Authorities in America will not touch them. Authorities in Canada will not touch them at all. And in some countries in Europe, action is very, uh, you know, restricted. So that is why they claim that they're all freedom fighters for Khalistan. Mm. They're actually extortionists and terrorists and, uh, you know, uh, people who are indulging in human trafficking. And we've seen that. We've seen that in the form of Siddhu Musawala being killed in India. We've seen that in the form of Sukhdul Singh being killed in Canada. Shiv, the apprehension is that this will set off a chain reaction and will have a domino effect. So if mm. one gang kills members of the other gang, the other gang will hit back and it is, it will, even for these gangsters and mafia, it will be down to the mattresses and America and Canada yeah. will unfortunately either have to take action against these elements or pay a price for it. It's, uh, you know, it's being done very effectively and that's the reason why the entire world now perceives Canada as a country that has condoned terrorist and gangster violence, a nexus that most people didn't even know about has become an everyday reality in the mainstream media. That is the truth of it. Nobody can manufacture this stuff. These claims being made by Nijjar's own son, not by some third party. It's a story that has become hugely bigger with each passing day. We're on day nine. Tomorrow is going to be day 10. And who knows what else it will bring. Gaurav, thanks very much as always. We're going to continue to track that story very closely here.